there's different definitions of advisory services out there and what people think about it. What's what's your definition? So, you know, there's there's many acronyms that have been thrown around over the last probably 20 years, you know, CAS and um, advisory services and, you know, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0. At the end of the day, I, I think advisory services is really adding, a, you know, what Jim said, you know, instead of looking in the rearview mirror doing compliance work, it's really about looking through the windshield and start starting to help those customers with the future thinking things um, that might benefit their their customers, such as, you know, on the tax side, as far as um, advising them on, you know, um, tax strategies and so on and so forth. On the accounting side, it's about um, being able to help them, hey, you know, if you impact um, revenue by 3% and reduced, you know, expenses by 2%, what does that mean to your, your, you know, your company, right? And, you know, I think the biggest challenge around advisory services is it's, it's a term that gets thrown around. And, you know, most firms are just struggling with where to start, right? I, where do I, where's that jumping in point, right, of, uh, of jumping in? So when you talk about advisory services, it's really about adding value and moving upstream and um, you know it's a different level of pricing and you've you've you hear you know fractional CFO say it's CFO for hire when you know I really consider it um, around those small business owners and the tax customers really helping them um, you know put more money in their pockets yep great Jim what's your definition of advisory services yeah, I think John touched on a lot of them. Um, let me get very narrow and talk about tax advisory services because I think it's easier for people to get, for our profession to get their head around. Um, number one, it begins with understanding and aligning with the client goals, which is different than where we start with most of our traditional tax planning. We tend to start with last year's tax return and then kind of work from there. We still do compliance work. We still do <clears throat> tax preparation, tax projections, but instead of uh, focusing on the compliance value, in other words, the tax liability. It's about recommending proactive tax saving strategies to clients and then helping them implement those and communicating the tax savings associated to each strategy. And the difference between firms that lead with advisory and firms that lead with compliance are the firms that, the traditional firms that lead with compliance just do volume, volume, volume. They're generalist firms. The firms who lead with tax advisory their clients can name a number about how much that firm saved them last year, and maybe over the last several years. And those advisory firms tend to become more specialized, a little bit more niche focused, because they find their passion about what they love to do, whether that's real estate or manufacturing or restaurants or whatever it is, and they lean in there. And they become experts for those clients not just the generalists that the traditional firms are. They begin to speak the language of construction. They begin to speak, you know, in terms of these great strategies that they just really love and really enjoy applying with their client base. And they become known as, as experts in there. And that's what this is all about. Our profession, everybody in our profession has such deep financial acumen, uh, but so many of them don't have the opportunity to really demonstrate and showcase that financial acumen. And your clients need it. They absolutely want it, willing to pay for it, need it. And uh, these firms that are leading with advisory are proving that. So I got a little narrow on the tax advisory, but it, you, once we get there, the same applies to business advisory, starting with those client goals, making sure that we're tracking towards those. And we're always looking forward and aligned with the client and their perspective.